Uh, thank you very much, brethren. Welcome once more. Today is Thursday, the 28th of January. We are just ending the month, and uh, we, are, we, we are coming to the climax of our theme, the theme of building a firm foundation in Christ. Praise the Lord. So today I'm going to, uh, to bring my, my last, uh, my last uh, discussion, my last devotion concerning building a firm foundation. And uh, uh, today I want uh, to talk about the result of building a firm foundation or the benefit of building a firm foundation. And the brethren, the result, the, the benefits, they all go on the same level. And I want to talk about holy living, holy living. Let us pray. We thank you, dear Father in heaven, that you have given us this new, new day. Indeed, we are rejoicing as we come close to the end of the month in this new year. Now we know that, Lord, you are with us and you are walking with us this new, new year. And you have called us to build our faith on a firm foundation. We pray as we continue this year that we shall be walking and living in holiness, living a new life, a victorious life, an overcoming life, defeating and conquering all the challenges and torrents and storms and temptations that come in our lives because we are founded on a strong foundation, which is the mind of Christ in us. Now, Lord, as we talk about the results and benefits of building this and walking this firm foundation, uh, help us, Lord, to get a new thought today, a new thought that will be dominant as we walk along the paths of life and as we serve you, as we serve humanity this day. We pray that we shall end this day with joy rejoicing that you have been with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, today I want to talk about the holy living. Holy living as a result, as the benefit of having built a strong foundation, a, a firm foundation. And I said this, that this firm foundation is Christ Jesus. This firm foundation, as we have, found, we, have, we have discussed and discovered, is the mind of Christ in us. And we have said that the center, the central pillar, which our God seeks to deal with in order to build a firm foundation, it is our mind and our heart. And we have also known that the devil, who is clever and crafty, evil-minded, he knows where to destroy. He seeks to destroy our mind. He seeks to darken our mind. He seeks to harden our mind. He seeks to deplave, to ensure that we are confused, we are not sober. But brethren, we thank God because the power of the blood of Christ is power that can bring back life. The power of the Holy Spirit of God is power that can illuminate anew, transform and recreate. When we have been recreated like that, when we have been transferred to become the children of God and living in a new status of life, this life is what we call holy living. And today, brethren, I want to talk about holy life. Brethren, I see Christian living coming from the invitation to participate in the blessings of salvation, which we have received. And because we have acquired a new way of life, then this new life is what we call holy life. Our brother talks about this holy life. He says, we were therefore buried with Christ through baptism into death, in order that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have acquired a new foundation, a strong foundation, if we have been transferred from to if we were and now we are, brethren, 
We have become a new creation. We have become the children of God. Now we live a new life. Now we live a holy life. Praise the Lord. In the book of First Peter, chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, our brother Peter says, Be holy in all things you do. He says, Be holy because I am holy. Brethren, we as children of God, we are called to be holy because Christ Jesus, the master of our calling, is holy. When we start living holy life, brethren, we are different. We are different. We are unique in the world. A unique people. The Bible says he chose us to be holy and blameless. We are to live a life that is holy, not life that is that life that is what is blamed all the time. We have to be blameless. Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 4. The Bible says you shall be holy for the Lord has chosen you. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verses 26. So brethren, you can see that we who have been transformed, we whose mind has been recreated and new, we who have acquired a new status by transfer in the spirit, we are called to live a new life, a holy life. Brethren, these scriptures tell us most clearly that we Christians, we have been called and we have been called to live a new life, a holy life. Our calling is to live a holy life. The command of our calling, the demand of our calling, is that we must live a holy life. That is the key demand, that we must live a holy life. One of the ways to know whether indeed God has worked on your mind, when one of the ways to assess whether you have been transformed, the way to know whether you have acquired a new status is to see the way you are living since you are born again. The Christians said, sing. There is a great change since I've been born again. There is a high wide change since I have been born. There is a high wide change. Since I have been born, there is a high white change. Since I have been born, there is a great change. Since I have been born again, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. There is a great change. Since I've been born again, some friends I used to have, I don't have them anymore. Some friends I used to have, I don't have them anymore. Some, pre some friends I used to have, I don't have them anymore. There is a great change since I've been born again. Some praise I used to go. I don't go there anymore. Some praise I used to go. I don't go there anymore. Some praise I used to go. I don't go there anymore. There is a great change since I've been born again. Some clothes I used to wear. I don't wear them anymore. Some clothes I used to wear. I don't wear them anymore. Some clothes I used to wear, I don't wear them anymore. There is a great change since I've been born again. So the change, the change, brethren, there's a great and high and wide change since we were born again, since we destroyed the weak foundation, since we dig deep until we reach the lock and put our foundation of faith on the lock who is Christ Jesus. 
since we acquired the mind of Christ, now we have become new creation. And the difference is big. The difference appears in the practical way we live in. And I'm saying the demand of our calling as Christians is that we must live a new life. The holy life is what our brother Paul describes as life that is worthy. A life that is worthy of our calling. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. He challenges every Christian to make sure that our life is holy life. Holy living. The only way that Christians can claim the volante of their standing before God is by living a holy living. What is holy living, brethren? As we have as we have said before, our calling to be holy is a calling to live a holy life. This life is dedicated life. It is life that has been set apart for God. It is life that materializes as beautiful life, the mark of holiness that makes Christians to be different from, from all people in the world and, and other status or standings in the presence of God. Brethren, the mark that makes us different and unique is holiness. That is the mark. The mark that makes Christian life be different is holiness. And we can therefore say our living as Christians is living to be different. We become not only people with a difference, but we become people who make a difference wherever we are. We are different not because we, we, we remove ourselves from others. No, but we are different because we are unique. We are different because we have been transferred in our status. Upon becoming Christians, we leave behind all our former ways of life in which we identified with the patterns of this world which Paul refers to as the kingdom of darkness. We no longer live like that. We no longer live as we used to live, but now we live a holy life. We no longer seek to, to, to be just like others. No, we are not easily influenced by whatever comes our way. No, instead we seek to be transformed, to become like Christ, who is the master of our calling. Our brother John, in his, in his epistle to all Christians, he says, whoever claims to be in Christ must walk as Christ walked. You know, when we talk, when you use the word walk, we are talking about, we are talking about living every day, practical living every day. So we must live every day as Christ lived. And Christ lived in holiness. He did what was good. His life was not to blame. It was not full of iniquity and wickedness and filth that is immoral and acceptable before God. No, he lived a decent life, a simple life, a holy life, a life that is acceptable in society. This element of the beauty of life that reflects in holiness, brethren, is not only a benefit but it is also the result, the result of having been transformed, of having built a strong foundation in Christ. If you don't see your life changing from the time you believed, if you don't see your time, life changing from the time you are baptized or confirmed, if you don't see your life changing from the time you said, now I belong to Christ, brethren, you, you need to ask yourself, is my foundation strong or am I still living in the shaky? foundation that can be tossed to and fro, influenced, easily taken, easily dragged away and led astray by evil spirits and evil-minded people. Oh no, brethren, come back, build a strong foundation, give yourself to Christ for transformation and a transfer of status and start living that victorious life, that new life, that holy life. A blessed life that you'll enjoy, life that will give you peace, life, life that will give you hope and assure you of a new life in eternity. 
in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.